How to do a concealed carry quick gun draw for actors and stunt performers? That's what we'll answer in today's video. Hi, my name is Dylan Wilson with CBT Stunt Alliance. Train hard, perform easy. We help actors, stunt performers, and filmmakers learn professional caliber stunt training for use in film, TV, and live action entertainment. Before we get underway, if you'd like to add pistol and revolver movie gun training to your acting or stunt performer skill set, check out our highly popular online master course at MovieGunTraining.com or click on the link below this video. You can learn all the movie set gun safety basics, how to safely draw and shoot a pistol for film and TV production, how to properly hold you know, the pistol, uh, tactical movements, pistol disarms, pistol reloads, how to do scene work with pistols and revolvers, and more. All taught by pro armorers for the film and TV industry. You can sign up now and start training now. Go to MovieGunTraining.com for more info. Okay, so we get a lot of questions about tactical movie gun training for film and television. So we're going to share a few tips with you. We figured we'd share with you a few cool tactical movie gun techniques that you can use for your reel. So you can have things that other actors and stunt performers don't have. Just know that for the most part, that it's best to keep moving while you're doing these techniques, like you're about to see in the next action movie clip. This helps to give your reel that wow factor. When you have a series of things in your reel that no one else has, it helps you to stand out head and shoulders above everyone else. Always remember, it's what you can do that other actors and stunt performers can't do that makes you stand out. Okay, so why even use a concealed carry quick gun draw for film and TV? Well, for two reasons. One, high production value. It definitely boosts production value, especially for any type of movie gun choreography. And two, character development. The audience definitely believes your character when you can actually demonstrate and pull this off properly. Check out the clip from the TV show Miami Vice to see this in action. Why? You want it back? I'm about your what? What else you got for me? Huh? Now I'm actually an experienced stunt coordinator and armor for film and TV turned full-time director. This is something I plan to do from the beginning of my career, even attending and graduating film school as a director. Along my journey, I noticed that being a stunt coordinator and armor made me a better director, and being a director made me a better stunt coordinator and armor. Now how this benefits you is that I can share with you insights and experience from both sides of the camera as well through all phases of production. Okay, so before we begin movie gun training, we always do a safety briefing. Now, this is different than the one that we do on set since you're at home and we're not actually issuing any prop guns to you. Yet with us, safety is always paramount. This will serve as your safety briefing. Again, it's different than the ones that we do on set since we're not issuing you any movie guns. Yet since we wish to instill safe practices into you, we modified it for your benefit. So pick up your movie prop gun, keep your finger off the trigger, make sure it's on safe as well as unloaded. So finger here on the frame, unloaded. Same with this one. Finger here, unloaded, and it's on safe. Now, as a reminder, never do any movie gun training with real firearms. Do not do dry fire. Make sure you invest in a, a good movie prop. If you need to find one, watch our video on how to get a, a movie prop gun for cheap. The link is below this video. We're going to cover some prop gun safety rules that you can use at home. These are different from gun safety rules that you use on a live fire range. You can learn more about the differences with our highly popular video, Real Firearms Training versus Movie Gun Training. The link to it is below this video. So I wish for you to, to memorize the acronym DIFU or DIFU. The DI stands for direction. So we always want, we always want to point the movie gun in a safe direction and never point it at another person. Even if it's a, uh, you know, 
airsoft or something like that, it doesn't matter. You always, you always train the same way. So there are two directions that are you are clear to point the firearm in. One is straight down into the ground. So if you're up standing around you're between scenes or something, you can take the pistol or the carbine and just let it hang by your side and point straight down to the ground. That's a safe direction. The second direction is whatever the armor determines to be downrange, which is safe. And for you, that'll be a wall. So you choose a wall in your house or your apartment. Make sure it's not a place that's highly trafficked where people can walk in front of you or something. It could even be aiming inside of a closet, right? So whatever, whatever place is good for you. For me, it's gonna be a 180 degree arc from this wall all the way out to camera to this wall. I won't be pointing back that way because sometimes I'll have to show you like this, and then sometimes I'll show you like this. So then this 180 degree arc is my is downrange for me, yet I won't point it back that way. And this is how you have to be, so you always are aware of where you're pointing your, your movie prop gun. The F is you always keep your finger off the trigger, and you want to keep it on the frame of any movie prop gun that you're carrying. Keep it away. Don't put it here. Some people put it here in a trigger guard or something like that. No, keep it on the frame until the armorer tells you or shows you otherwise. The U stands for unloaded. So keep it unloaded and you can always check and make sure it's unloaded once again until the armorer tells or shows you otherwise. Okay, this concludes our safety briefing. Now that you've done that, go ahead and insert one magazine into your movie prop gun. And listen to the instructions given by the armorer. All right, so in this instructional, we're going to share with you the first movie gun draw from our master course, and we call it Concealed Carry Draw 1 uh, Pullover Shirt. And this one, starts with the pistol being staged at the hip or even what some people refer to as the appendix area which is right here the mechanics are still the same the different people do this differently and everyone has their reasons for doing uh, what they're doing the stuff that we do we is from elite tactical so it's how elite soldiers SWAT teams things uh, are trained to do things so some of the things that civilians do tend to be a, a bit different uh, yet are just know that whatever you do practice so that you're smooth with it so there is a a draw count or a number of steps to uh, presenting a pistol and different people have different numbers the uh, actual draw count that, that our stunt team uses is a five-step draw count because there are two uh, CQB positions yet the one that we teach is a three-step draw count which has one CQB position you'll understand what this means in, in a moment so what we're going to do is we're going to take this step by step we'll do it first on the, the right side and then we'll do it on the left side and so the first thing you wish to do is Take your, your uh, movie prop pistol and you're going to insert it right here in your waistband at the hip. See that? Boom. Now you're going to take your shirt and just pull it over and hang it like that. That's why we call it Concealed Carry Draw 1 Pullover Shirt because it's a pullover shirt. If it's a button-up shirt or something or jacket, it, it's a different way that you, you uh, present it. So we're just going to say the, the trigger word we'll say is, is uh, threat. So when we say threat, that'll be the cue to actually start. So if we're here, you know, standing around like this in the natural position or hands hanging to the side, then we'll say threat. Well, remember three steps to presenting it, to doing the, the full draw. So this is gonna be step one. The support hand, which is the hand that is supporting the pistol. You have the uh, shooting hand or the firing hand, which is the hand that actually pulls the trigger on the pistol. So with the support hand, it's gonna reach over and where the pistol is, it's gonna grab your shirt. See that, right there. Pistol's there, we wanna grab the shirt right where the pistol is. And then we're gonna pull up on like a 45 degree angle, like up and over, so like a 90 degree angle to right here. Up, which produces the gun, and over. See that? So the motion is like this. Up and over, up and over up and over and that's where the support hand stays so if you notice the pistol has been produced whether it's here or here it doesn't matter right and what this does is it keeps the shirt tight because there's no way now that when you're trying to get the pistol with the firing hand it's going to get caught up with your shirt it's too tight it's almost you can almost hear you can hear it you know when you when you pull your shirt it's how tight it should be the other thing is 
it keeps your support hand out of the way when you draw. You know, some people can, you know, draw, draw like this. Yeah, what happens, this has happened before. This is why with SWAT teams and other, you know, elite forces, why they do the things the way they do. In a, in a stressful situation, you're here and you take the gun out and boom, you shoot your own hand. So you get the support hand out of the way and then the, the pistol comes up. So this is the first part. This all happens on the first beat. So this and the firing hand goes to the pistol. Now look at the thumb. The thumb is gonna go right behind the pistol and seat and get a good grip. The Y, this portion here, is gonna go right here on the tang of the pistol. And the pointer finger, the trigger finger, is gonna go right here on the side of it. It, it stays on the frame where the frame would be if it's in your, even if it's in your clothes. See, the trigger would be down here. I don't wanna be there. I wanna train so my finger's right there where the frame would be. This is all one. So if we're here, and we'll do it, you know, uh, when we train and you learn in our master course, we teach you, you know, step by step, we'll say one. You see all that? That's all happened at one. Once again, one. And that's it. So you see the thumb is behind the pistol. Got a good one-handed pistol grip is what essentially happens. And the finger is on the slide. This is all on the first beat of the three-step draw count, the first, first step. So once again, this all happens on one support hand grabs and it, it grabs right where the pistol is, not in front of it, not behind it, right where the pistol is in line with the slide, pulls up and over. The firing hand, the thumb goes in and seats behind the pistol so that this, the wide portion of your hand seats on the tang. These fingers grip the hand grip of the, of the handgun and the trigger finger lays on the, on the slide. And you're still here. You have not cleared, you have not pulled or produced the, uh, cleared your, your pants with the pistol. You're just right here, right? Now, uh, st the second step is from this position, we're going to pu pull the pistol up and the elbow drops down, just like this, and you see the finger is still on the slide. This is actually a CQB firing position, right? It's, we don't stop here, you just know this is how, where, it, where it goes. So if you notice, once again, from this position, we're here, the elbow comes in, the finger's right there, and you notice we're already on target. So even if we had to draw and someone is like very close to us, we're already right there on target, you know, with the CQP position, and it gives us uh, full control of the pistol, even if they try to grab it or take it from us. So that's step two. We're still in this position with step two. Step three is now the pistol slides forward, the support hand comes in, and we're going to t uh, take on the uh, two-hand grip that we, that we uh, taught you in a previous video. If you don't know how to do the two-handed grip, uh, watch our previous video on that. And we go right to the two-handed grip. We go out and we fire twice. And you say, bang, bang. All right? So that is the, the uh, concealed carry draw one pullover shirt. I'm going to do that a few more times with the, the account one two three four and you can follow along and we always say it first then we do it conceal carry draw one pull over shirt one two three bang bang and then we go and we reholster all right do this from the side so you can see it one see that that's all on one two Three, bang, bang. Right, that's how it works. Now everything that we train on the right, we also train on the left. Especially if you're a, an actor, action actor, or stunt performer, you wish you'd do it on both sides. Sometimes it may work out that way on camera where they need you to do it on the other, other hand, or you might be stunt doubling an actor who, guess what, is left-handed. So everything that you do on the right, you want to be able to also do on the left. And so we're going to demonstrate the same thing on the left side. I'll do it from the side. And you notice nothing changes. Conceal carry draw one. One. Two. Three. Bang, bang. And now I'll do it just saying the word threat. This is how you wish to train. 
when you're doing it, you say one, two, three, so you can perfect your form every step of the way. Once you have it perfected, then you just can go on the word threat. So don't rush this. You know, they may actually slow this down, shoot it at 60 FPS or something, or 120 FPS to slow it down, because they like how you look when you're, when you're doing the draw. So you want to be picture perfect with, with each, each one. So I'll do it again a bit slowly, yet I'll do it smoothly without counting. I'll just say the word threat when I'm ready. Threat. Bang, bang. And there it is. So that's concealed carry draw one, pullover shirt. We show you step by step how to do the reholsters in our master course. There's reasons why we do everything, because this everything we're showing you is, is, is uh, for combat purposes. This is the same technique for shooting with a with a, a live or real handgun as well. Yeah, for right now, just make make sure you focus on doing the uh, the actual draw itself. Broken out step by step to make it easier for you to understand. Lastly, we'll finish up by sharing some tips for character development, film and TV production recommendations, and more. Yeah, before we do, check this out. Let's take a sneak peek and look inside this master course that was made by pro armors for film and TV, stunt coordinators, actors, and filmmakers for professional actors, stunt performers, and filmmakers, and content creators. By the way, if you're a veteran or experienced with firearms, you're going to learn how to convert your skills into movies and TV. So you can see here, first of all, we designed our platform to be intuitive and easy to use. The moment you log into it with your, on your computer or your phone, you pretty much understand exactly what's going on and you know how to navigate it right away. Now, each of our master courses starts off with an introduction so you get to meet your instructors as well as a safety briefing. Let's go ahead and take a look. Quick look at these at this now. Those who can't and you see the instructors go over their you know, the qualifications, their background, that kind of thing. And also, you get a cheat sheet, which we'll cover in a moment. This is a handout that accompanies uh, the course, helps you to lock in what you're learning, plus our private online social community, which we'll cover a little bit later on. You also get our email address and contact information to be able to contact us with any questions that you may have. Now, as you can see, our innovative master course platform shows you if you finished the instructional or not, or how much of it you did learn. You know, so if you notice, each one is broken down into units. This is what each of these are. And each of these units are broken down into classes or video instructionals. And it makes it easier to, to group everything together. Each of the instructionals are videos and they're about 10 minutes long. There are a few that might be a little bit longer because they have to be, for the most part, they're about 10 minutes long. We like to keep it bite-sized and it makes it easier, more effective for you to learn. One of the other great things about the platform is if you're studying and you're you know, watching or learning some of the videos, and say you, you know, you're watching it today and you get busy and you can't watch it again for like a week. You know, in a week's time, you're not gonna remember what you learned last. You gotta look through all these videos and figure out where you left off. No, our platform design, it tells you which instructionals, which classes you completed, right? And then it tells you how much, what percentage of the unit you actually completed. So this is 50% complete, so two classes were done, and there's two left. So in a week's time, you know to start right here. So with this one, these are pro screen tests for pistol and revolver. It has tactical reloads, speed reloads. A lot of the classes don't teach you how to do this because there's just not enough time to teach someone to do all this stuff you know, in a two or three hour session. Let's take a look at uh, cinematic pistol reloads, looking at the tactical reload. Let's go and take a look at this one now. See how this looks. Into his hand and insert the new magazine. Put the old magazine into his pocket and then resume firing. Bang, bang, bang. Now, one of the great things that we include are what we call live action video displays. And what these are are things that we're, they're clips from actual movies or even live training sessions where you actually can see the techniques being used in movies, TV, or real life. And it really helps you to lock in the, uh, the lessons. So let's go ahead and we're gonna take a look at one of them now. And you see, everything that you're learning, you see how it actually is used in a, in a movie. Let's go ahead and take a look at the tactical pistol disarm triple play. These are pistol disarms, some of the most famous pistol disarms that have been used in film and TV history. I'm gonna come here, turn it around, and fire, bang, bang, okay? Again, Again, we're leveraging the off-body aiming technique, you know, when we're doing that. And whenever we train, we train with solid rubbers. Here's the same kind of pistol disarms from the movie John Wick. We have these in here, so you actually can take a look at it. So let's take a look at one now and see how it actually plays out. Now 
doesn't that look familiar? This one is our monthly sharpen and polish video conference lab. Each month we do this and it's designed to actually help you with your career. Try our pistol and revolver master course for 48 hours risk free. After reviewing the master course, if you don't like what you see and it doesn't work for you, we'll refund every penny. Who else lets you go through their movie gun training and then if you're not happy, it gives you a complete refund. Bottom line, we're passionate about making our customers happy and keeping them that way. So well worth the investment if you're serious about adding rifle, carbine, and shotgun, movie gun training to your current acting or stunt performer skill set. And understand that most stunt performers and actors don't invest in movie gun training. A small percentage invest in real gun tactical training and learn the most basic of skills. Also, local movie gun training classes are very rare and virtually never teach this type of stuff. They focus more on you walking around looking tactical and none of the other skills. So you'll have a significant advantage when auditioning and performing. Now we'll finish up by sharing some tips for character development, film and TV production recommendations and more. All right, a few tips. This draw is good for playing characters that are like federal agents, like FBI agents, CIA, uh, detectives, you know, police detectives, uh, spies, elite soldiers, and even assassins like you saw in the clip earlier. It is not good for playing roles like police officers or SWAT because they usually wear a holster, you know, an external holster. The same with soldiers. They usually have a, a, an external holster, not something where they're doing a concealed carry draw. And one last tip, you want to practice doing this concealed carry draw with the wardrobe that you're gonna be wearing in the scene or a close facsimile. This way you wanna make sure that you're smooth with it so that when you perform it, you'll look authentic and organic, just like the assassin that you saw in the clip earlier. Okay, so make sure you like this video and smash that subscribe button so you don't miss out on the next movie prop gun training video. Also, make sure you sign up for our Pro Stunt Tips email newsletter to get professional movie gun prop training tips in your inbox. Lastly, if you'd like more information on our highly popular online pistol and revolver master course, go to movieguntraining.com. Prepare to have your mind blown. Again, my name is Dylan Wilson with CBT Stunt Alliance. Train hard, perform easy. Don't miss our next video where we share with you another movie prop gun training tip. See you next video.